one of the regrets that I have in in my career is I didn't do Yash Yashji's film, and uh, I was pitted against Madhuri ji, and uh, and I got scared. Malika Jain consumed me, and so many nights I've come back home, and it, it it's taken me days to be out of it. It's not easy, Bombay film industry. Uh, they did not do mother's role. And those days there was a taboo saying that the moment you do mother's role, silly girl, you know, you're refusing a Mani Ratnam film because you have to play mother at the age of 1920. So big deal. You know, please go ahead and do it. A lot of frustration, a lot of high points and low points and, you know, confused, uh, unsure, hurt. And I mean, of course, I've been through the whole shebang of the emotions during my career. Hi, this is Bhavna and you're watching India Today. Today, I'm joined by an actress who has stunned us every time she has appeared on screen and is all set to leave us mind-boggled with her next outing, which is Hira Mandi. Uh, I have, of course, you must have guessed by now, I have Manisha Koirala with me right here on the All India Today. Firstly, a huge welcome to you, ma'am. How are you? Thank you, Bhavna, so much for such a sweet uh, introduction. Uh, basically, I'm doing great, Bhavna. I'm doing exceptionally well, and uh, in Nepal right now. Yeah, and, I was told. Uh, yeah, I wanted to do this in person, but I was told you are in Nepal, so I said, okay, fine, I'll just do it on Zoom for now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I've been getting really um wonderful feedback, which is so encouraging for uh us artists, you know. So thank you Absolutely. for that. No, and, and you know, I remember when I saw the first poster and in fact the trailer, the teaser, and I mean, it's amazing um, how you have just like shared all the uh, all the inhibitions or just like, just the world. I mean, when I'm looking at you uh, in that poster, I cannot see Manisha at all. And I think that's amazing, right? Like, that that's the best part. Um but was there, and this is your second outing with Bhansali, actually, Bhansali, sir. It's not your first. Um, it's very difficult for people to remember because Khamoshi happened like years back. And now this is happening. I want to know, um, what were the two special reasons for you to say yes? So, uh, as you rightly said, you know, when I was offered uh, this uh, project, you know, uh, to be, I've been seeing Sanjay, and his growth as a director for the last so many years, like everybody else has been. And uh, during Khamushi also, he chose such unassuming, so intimate, so um, sweet, simple story. In fact, Khamushi's story, somebody else made years later and won Oscar also. Um, you know, and that's a, that story had touched me many years back when I did Kamushi. And so I have been noticing uh, that with the grandeur that he does now, um, his focus has always been on a very intimate equation of the characters. So right. I love that. And in this script too, you know, in this script too, there was this uh, character of Malika Jan, who he had offered me to do, and of course, um, when uh, it's almost like like an antagonist, uh, not really there, but still, uh, very great character actually. Yeah, absolutely a great character, and but it has layers. It has so many things that you can't put put her in a box and for me that I'm hungry for that I mm. mean it's great uh, when you have a phenomenal director and a great role and a good script and great co-actors you know and the whole technical team is great but what do I put in you know mm. as an actor uh, if there is a space for me to play around or not as an actor is there Absolutely. space for me to grow and discover and bring something on the table, mm. you know? And uh, with Sanjay, that became, it was, it was so nice. 
Mm-hmm. You look gorgeous while doing that, and like you said, it is it is an out and out like gray character, and I I know that you know it's very difficult to pull a character like this off. Also, one it can take a mental toll on you because if you're not if you don't identify with that world, with that culture, or just the politics of it, uh, it can really get to you. Even when you know that this is just a job, you act and you go back home as Manisha, but. but sometimes it can right like how do you separate the character from you especially when see the thing is uh, i'm trained uh, over the years uh, because you know in in bombay film industry uh, during my time like you know 10 20 years back um almost 30 years back um we used to do movies like 12 movies a year and so and three three films uh on the floor so we, we would be finishing one shoot go to rush to another one go to another one so there was no chance for us to carry the character that we carried more than the set so it was always switch on switch off switch on switch off switch mm-hmm. on switch off and somehow we sailed through that you know and today when i think want to think about it i don't know how i did it i don't know <laughs> uh Honestly, I have no clue. Don't ask me. All I knew that we did it, and there was no choice but to do it. And that's that was. I think all uh, actors of my generation have done it. Um, but today, when I'm doing a project, and especially if I'm given such a great project in my hand, you know, uh, with such a legendary director and so many, everything is perfect and top of the line. uh then i have to give my heart and soul my mind my everything i need to be consumed by it and and what happens is it's a character that i really don't know i don't Absolutely. know malika jaan in in my personal life anywhere i can't identify you know oh she's like this i need to copy her let me observe her and then yeah. i play that you know it's basically i'm trying to give life to sanjay's imagination really? of yeah of malika jaan and i'm t- navigating it so it's it's a something which is a discovery along the way and uh you're giving 200% of yourself and it it takes it consumes you malika jaan consumed me and so many nights i've come back home and it, it it's taken me days to be out of it it's not easy you know it's not easy to be in that mindset and then leave the set and be oh i'm okay i've done it i've done it i can't do it anymore you know it, i there's so many times i my head's been buzzing even after the shot has been over my heart has been full my you know and i just go on to this zone of quiet um you know solitude space where i just let it let whatever has to happen happen but you know it should not people should around me who are living with me a normal life they should not think are ye kya ho gaya isko you know uh, yeah, so i just excuse yeah. i do uh, tell everybody around me please pardon me and if i behave a little abnormal uh, if you know some you know, just know that you know it's it's not the true manisha koirala it's that somewhere Malika Jan at times has you know unconsciously comes out. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I say that Malika Jan or maybe you as a person as well, you like to be in control of things as much as possible because I think even I am like that. The moment uh, things go a little out of control, you start to like freak out in ways like you don't know what to do next. You like to be in control, which is that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's 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 okay to be like that, but at the same time. life has thrown a lot of curveballs at you manisha ji which i don't think any one of us can ever be prepared for right so in situations like that i think you have you have evolved so much in the last decade because of the curveballs that have been thrown at you uh, especially your cancer journey i will get the, get to that later on but just adapting and evolving with time has become second nature to you because of what what has happened with you personally as well um did that experience of not being able to control everything around changed you in uh, in ways and 
how has that impacted the way you look at scripts now or the way you look at life so you know the thing is when i was a younger person i really was very spontaneous i was really more you no know, okay shall we go to paris let's go to paris so i'll book my ticket tomorrow and go down you know i was very impulsive very spontaneous all that but also i mean it is great uh, when you are young and you are doing that but i think with time with age um also with the experience that i've had i like uh i like to uh, be very well planned i like to rehearse things zillion times i like to meticulously do everything so my personal growth has been that i should not do i mean even that to an extreme is wrong even this to an extreme is wrong and and one has to find a middle path and my journey my lessons in my learning is to figure out you know sometimes it's good to be spontaneous and chill and just take it easy and you know go with the flow of life and sometimes yeah. because so many times you know we plan and and it doesn't happen that way relax and find the middle path and because if you want mental peace if you need peace in life then your priority needs you need to figure out you know how to not be too rigid about life and Absolutely. this is the way i'm going to be in so um but also at the same time i uh, as far as my work is concerned i do get rattled up when i'm thrown something and it has happened most of the time i'm thrown something and i've asked to perform where i'm not actually mentally prepared and mm. and i've struggled struggle struggle and i have to tell myself no manisha you are an actor and you need to really pick up from whatever whenever whatever is thrown at you you need you should so honestly it's it's this willingness to all the time improve not stick to whatever your comfort zone is yeah. um i think the growth is there but you have never done that you have never really boxed yourself or let anyone box you because i remember back then even to do a film like like you know different the kind of projects that you picked even a gombe or dil se those were not easy projects to pick especially in the 90s where commercial cinema was at its peak where everyone was only resorting to like dancing and singing mostly i mean of course there were and this kind of cinema was usually called parallel cinema i mean you know but you have done that and you balanced that pretty well and when you were perhaps at the peak you also decided to take it a little easy and not really be in in any sort of race i don't know of many actors who can boast and who can say that they took these decisions back then um when and i'm sure everything comes with its own consequences good and bad how where did you what how did you firstly manage to take those decisions back then and what were the kind of consequences you had to face because of that because you have to let go of a lot of things when you decide something for yourself but you have to be okay with it yeah so basically you know when you took names of bombay and other things those days uh, heroines especially in bollywood or bombay film industry uh, they did not do mothers role and those day there was a taboo saying that the moment you do mother's role mm. even if you're a heroine and a protagonist um you will always you'll very quickly get into this side uh, mother's role and, and and you know uh, you will no longer be the main heroine and that fear was with everybody around me uh, you know whoever was my manager and blah 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 and my f- other people industry people and uh, there was one person though ashok mehta ji who is no longer living right now but ashok mm-hmm. ji called me up and she said silly girl you know you're refusing a money ratnam film because you have to play mother at the age of 1920 so big deal you know please go ahead and do it you should be lucky that he's offered your film you know you should see yeah. the kind of movies he makes so and thank god thank god you know uh, i had people like him around me to guide me to tell me that if i refuse a project like this it'll be a huge setback as an artist you know i grew so much while working in manisha's film bombay as an actor the way he was taking shots i mean he's a maestro he's yeah. a living legend uh, you know maniratnam and 
experimented with this kind of shots and that shot and i was like so grateful for ashok ji to you know scold me and put me on the right path you know so honestly it's not my own mind uh, it, i wasn't that sharp or intelligent or ambitious for that matter um i i think i was just blessed with the right people who advised me the right things and i understood what they were trying to tell me and i took those decision that bag that but but you know when back then when you decided that okay i want to take it a little easy now easy in the sense that i don't want to do every thing that comes my way i can be i can pick and choose as per what the project is really giving me right which means that you have to say no to a lot of things which also means that a lot of people might might also have a perception about you which happens in the industry a lot of times were there things like that that you had to battle at a certain phase in your career and you got a little uh, maybe like uh, you know it gets it gets frustrating let's be honest that if this keeps happening were you at any point frustrated by this you know i've had a pretty long career like you know it's almost like 30 plus years that i entered um, you know and i definitely went through a lot of uh, situation a lot of frustration a lot of high point and low points and you know confused uh, unsure hurt and i mean of course i went through the whole shebang of the emotions during my career uh, it's such a long span um and uh, all i can say is that uh, and i was also honestly i was i didn't put so much of thinking in my films i right. uh, i was blessed that good directors uh, liked my work and they wanted uh, me in the project and luckily by the grace of god i performed well and um so it kind of worked for me but there were times you know when i was not getting decent roles and there was times when i was confused should i be doing this or should i be doing something else you know i went to new york uh, in nyu i studied filmmaking in middle of my career you know i i decided to learn about uh, direction and editing and all that um and then when i came back not too many great projects was offered to me mm. i mean a lot of time there's there are times that i felt a lot of frustration and let down and confusion you know i went through that quite a lot quite a lot yeah i can see i mean when you it's like you're just in all that nostalgia right now i can just see it on your face that you know it's like suddenly you just remember everything uh but uh but you know i have to also tell you that your filmography and the kind of work that you have done is always going to be a textbook example for many others to follow that you can you can do commercial films but at the same time you can do what you really want to do because not many uh, do that another thing which has been very unique to you personally i feel is the fact that you have been part of a lot of projects where you i mean there were two or three heroines or at least two minimum right like and that is again at the time when it was not common right i want to know and again with hira mandi you are surrounded by it's a all women army according to me this that's like one of the things that i see in that project that comes with a lot of security one because you have to be very secure in your own skin and in your talent to be able to do that but just because you are secure does not mean everyone else around you is going to be secure how do you deal with all of that prejudice and insecurities which might erupt from people around you so i did you know one of the regrets that i have in in my career is i didn't do yash yashji's film and uh, i was pitted against madhuri ji and uh, and i got scared and i was thinking oh my god you know uh, will i be so i kind of backed out of of that project every every actress of my time when yashi was alive um wanted to work in yashi's film and because he portrayed women so beautifully and it i went to yashi's office and i said so it is my dream to be your heroine solo you're pitting me against you know madhuri ji and you know i'm somehow 
not somehow the better judgment of mine i kind of i think uh i missed out um but years later when raj santoshi ji offered a uh, lajja to me i took it <laughs> because i had already done the mistake before <laughs> you see so and um i mean uh, that lajja story was so mind blowing you know it was yeah. it was all women centric and it was all you know women's issues and from from different strata of society so i was bold over the uh, the subject and uh, we did that um yeah and i think when you have a strong maker you know and when you're also confident in your own skin and Absolutely. also i the thing is i had already done the mistake of letting go of one major project which could have been a landmark project also in my career mm-hmm. and uh, i realized i don't want to do that mistake again out of my silly insecurities you know and i'm so glad i did it i am so proud of lajja and i and, love uh, that film i love yeah. that film badi mushkil yeah. is one of my most favorite tracks which i i think I will speak for everyone. We love that track. We love how both of you bring together yeah. this feminine energy into that song, which is so beautiful yeah. to watch. It's beautiful, like and and you know, Madhuri ji is such a good person. She's such a good artist. She's such a, a good person. And there was no way. There was no need for me to be insecure or anything. You know, it's just that when you have a strong actor in front of you, you only perform better. you only in they encourage you to perform better and be you know so all that comes with age and experiences and all that you know um, and uh, i loved working with madhuri ji in that i loved working with rekha ji you know this such a uh, beautiful experience working with them in lajja i can only imagine like only if i could be a fly on a wall where there are three powerhouse of talents working together i feel that's that's like a dream come true for any cinema lover you know eventually <laughs> but also uh, with hira mandi i i i was curious because there i mean it was announced a long back but we also know that sanjay leela bansali is a task master so he will not put it out till he's very much convinced of what the product entails right which means yeah. that there were there were quite a few delays as well as artists were associated with the project um and i know that everyone who would meet and they would just be like when is this coming out what is happening did it at any point get like how did you deal with that pressure because you know that whatever is in the making is great but achhi cheezon ke liye wait karna padta hai <laughs> so uh basically uh most of us are very greedy to work in great project you know we are artists and we know the value of a good director good script good role you know um so everything else kuch bhi takleef ho kuch bhi impatience ho kuch bhi uh, ho i think they are way too small and irritant uh, than the joy of being part of such a beautiful project and and w- somewhere we were secured because mm. uh because we know uh, sanjay will never compromise with quality absolutely and and so you know when you look at from uh, from that perspective that you have such a committed filmmaker um how does it matter how long does it take you know mm. it really doesn't matter ki ek saal lage ki do saal lage ki teen saal lage ki char saal lage you know whenever it's out it's going to be something that you are going to be proud of so i felt i mean i've reached a stage where you know i to meet more than time the quality matters yeah and uh, people ask me oh how much of your time has gone and this project needs only 30 days of yours and acha 30 days meaning mera role to bahut chota hoga so you rather i rather give you time but i rather i have a lot of time in hand mm. for my work you know of course of course i mean i have zillion hobbies and zillion things to do but when it comes to my work i'm greedy 
it's I want to be with somebody who has a lot of patience. Yeah. I have a lot of patience and I want to excel. So it might take extra days. It might take extra hours. I don't care. As long as the end result is going to be marvelous. So I'm focused about that. <laughs> I know that we don't have a lot of time. So I want to wrap with by asking you that, you know, uh, I think you penned down a note on Instagram once everything was short and like, you know, you, you spoke about how this is like a second life to your career in ways. I mean, just this entire phase post post battling cancer and com coming out victorious from that. Right. Um, what is it that Manisha is now looking at? Because see, we have seen your first, the first phase of your life, which had some amazing projects, some regrets, like you mentioned, but nonetheless, a great journey. But times have changed so much in the last decade, right? Like what people want, what people expect, um, their ideologies and the acceptance, everything has changed, which means that artist is also evolving with them. So what is it that you hope uh, to show people now? What is it that you have still think is untapped and you want someone to give you a role like that? So honestly, after getting, uh, finishing Malika Jan, uh, uh, Hira Mandi and all that, uh, I feel as an artist, I need a little time to unwind from it. I need a time to just relax, chill and come back to my family and to my roots and just uh, be completely uh, take a rest. Um, also what happens is, um, you know, what cancer has taught me is to, uh, I mean, is that for me, I need a break. I mm. want to, when I'm taking on work, I give my 200, 3%, 200, 300%, you know, and um, um, I know emotionally, mentally, physically, uh, I've been consumed by that. So I need to disconnect, get focus on my health and my well-being, my yeah. mental health, my emotional health, my physical health, everything, you know, uh, my sleep, my exercise, my nutrition, everything back on track uh, because my health is really important. Cancer's really taught me the value of health, you yeah. know. And so I need to get back into very healthy sound space and everything around me and then when something great calls me, I'm willing to work and put in the same amount of hard work that I did for last. And uh, I want to enjoy the process of filmmaking. I want to enjoy the process of acting. So obviously, I want to work with people who do the same, who have the same value system, who also yeah. love and honor what they do. You know, um, um yeah, I mean, let's hope for the best. I don't have any plans right now, except for looking after my health and getting back, uh, you know, that whole level of fitness. I'm talking about not only physically, but emotionally and mentally as well. Absolutely. And especially like you mentioned, with a character like this, you need that. After having played and given yourself to that character, you need that time. And not just that, I'm just happy that you you have that focus on your health because health is wealth, people say. But it is only after having had uh, had journaled what you have, it's only then you realize that it is actually health is wealth eventually. So I hope Very. that you keep, keep taking care of yourself because only if you're healthy is when you can entertain us and we will hope to see you do that for a longer period, obviously. So please, please do that. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, I am hoping you. to meet you once you are back in Mumbai uh, so that we can have a long... Because I, I literally have so many questions, but I know this will not uh, make do. So we have to meet in person as well. But thank you so much, ma'am, for this. Would love to. Uh, thank you.